Anemia kidney disease is different than other anemias because anemias with kidney disease is caused because the kidney isn't making enough of erythropoietin, EPO. It's a hormone that helps make red blood cells, helps transfer around your iron levels and it's needed to make red blood cells. So what happens in chronic kidney disease and the further stages that you have is you don't make enough of this hormone making you anemic. And anemia is the biggest cause of fatigue and kidney disease, just being exhausted. Now, how do you raise that hemoglobin level up? So you can always get an EPO medication, erythropoietin medication, erythropoietin stimulating agents. Ask your doctor because a lot of times you're really going to need one of those meds to help correct your anemia levels because you're not making the hormone. Another way that you can help correct it is by taking iron. Now with iron, you do have to be a little cautious here. So before taking iron, you should have a full iron profile test done. And within that iron profile is going to be a test that's called ferritin. That's a storage molecule of iron. That's one of the main values that we check your iron status by when you have kidney disease. So there is no optimal ideal range that anybody's come up with. We like the area of 100. That means you have good amounts of iron stores. Depending on the lab reference range, it can go anywhere from 10 all the way up to 150, 200, 250. It all depends on the lab value that they're using. If you're out of range on the ferritin, you don't want to take any extra iron. And even if you're at the high end of the ferritin, you don't want to take extra iron because extra iron where you're outside the values of the blood work ranges for ferritin is bad. It becomes actually something that's harmful to your body, causes oxidative stress, free radical damage. So you don't want to have a high ferritin. So before you go taking iron, make sure your ferritin isn't in a really high range because it does happen sometimes.